You start with what you have. You start with your vertices. So your format, and these are going to be this. Mm -hmm. It's going to start like this. These are interchangeable because this is a plus sign. It's going to start like this. Like, it looks like almost a circle, but instead of an R squared, we have a 1. And this is A squared, B squared. These two are interchangeable. The one with the, the longer part is the major axis. So start with this. Your vertices is on your major, this has to be on your major axis. Okay, so start like this. 0, 4, 0, negative 4. So that means your Y is your major axis. The Y now has to be where my A squared is. Because the Y is the major axis. <laughs> this is a really interesting question. Um, do the vertices are always your major axis? Major axis. So vertices, minor axis. It's like a co-pilot. Mm -hmm. But your co-pilot is not your major pilot. Is your co-pilot co-pilot? Mm -hmm. Co-vertices? Co now your co-vertices are here. So this is your minor axis. This is your ellipse right here. That's your ellipse. Well, sort of. I just missed the point, my, my oh. graph. Well, yeah, but my, my thing is really off. i got to reset this. So I missed the point. I was almost pretty good, right? Mm -hmm. I just got to reset this because it's not picking up the top. So now, A is the distance from the center to your vertex point. B is the distance from your center to your co-vertex point. So find your center. Your center is the average between these two. Add the x's, divide by 2. Add the y's, divide by 2. Your center is 0, 0. So we can take this out and this out. A is the distance from here to here, 4. Keep, keep track. And B is the distance from here to here, 2. And you don't need C in this case. So square this. Square this. And there's your formula. Make sure you give it to me. Leave, like, don't leave me with a square in it. this guy, vertices, 3, 0, and negative 3, 0, that means my x-axis is my major. So it means I'm going to start like this. This guy is going to have my a squared. So the distance from my center, so let me find my center, they didn't give it to me. So my center is halfway, 0, 0 again. So I can knock these out. So the distance from the center to the end of the vertex is A, which is 3. Foci is the distance from the center to the foci, that's C. So that's 2. And I don't know B, but I know, <coughs> God bless you, but I know this nice little formula to give me B. Now, all I care about is B squared. To plug that in there. So when you get to this point, to solve for b squared, just divide it by a negative 1. b squared is 5. I don't really need to know b. Then i got to square it again anyway. So just take the b squared and plug this guy in. a squared, don't forget to square your a. And here's your final answer. Uh, yeah, next Tuesday. Well, what I'll do is this. Today is hyperbola, tomorrow is equations of hyperbola. Friday, you could do your review in class. Monday, we'll go over your review, because I know a lot of you have Monday tests. And, tests. and Tuesday will be the test. Yeah, Lily. Yeah, I have what if you have Friday and Monday. Right. Right. So that's why I'm giving the review on Friday. And then just go to Mo the Edmodo to go over the review on Monday. I don't, my, last time I tried to go on Edmodo, like, it logs them out, and I don't know how to log them out. Okay, if it logs you out, just go under my names. You'll find the video under my name. Okay, I don't have to log in. Like, ju yeah, you can just join my channel, I guess. You can just go to my channel. Some of the kids from my other class, they just link the channel their YouTube. So they get access to my videos that way. They told me that's easier for them. So
So it's under my name, Raylan Moore, and you'll find my videos. I did reset the, the keys. So I'll give you the new key because everybody's having trouble with it. And I don't know why it's just locking them out. Here's your here's your group code. I don't know why it locked you out locked you out because my some of the other kids are getting access to it. Here's a new group code in case you can't get on. But I figured just by Monday I'll give you time. You, you spent the class time. You go over the homework, you can do the review in class. You don't have to do it on the weekend. And then Monday we'll just go over. How many have an AP test Monday? Whoa. All right, so let's do this. Let's go over it Tuesday, test on Wednesday. All right? All right, let's do that. All right. And Monday we'll just like do a little extra review if anybody, for anybody that's here for Monday. Alright, so are we all okay with this? I know your AP tests are difficult enough rather than throw another test in there. Okay, so your major axis is the whole thing from vertex to vertex. We didn't have to do, oh, I, I took some of these away, right? Did I take away 25? No. I like 25. Whoa, what's happening here? Okay, so start with this. You have a, a vertex. So therefore, your, your major axis is which one? Your y. So your y is going to start with the a squared. Your center is what? Zero, zero. So we're going to start, we're going to look just like this. We're going to plug in what we know. We know the 5 for a. So right now, we're right here at this point. Then... They didn't give me a B, they didn't give me a C. So that little equation isn't going to help me. But they said it passes through this point. So somewhere it's passing through the point 4, 2. <coughs> so pretend 4, 2 was on my ellipse somewhere. Somewhere it's passing through that point. This is your X point, your Y point. Just plug in an X value, a Y value, and you should be able to solve for B. All you need is B squared. Okay, so now, b squared turns out to be a pretty weird looking thing, yeah, b squared turns out to be this, so start like this. Because that's b squared, I don't need to take any square roots. Now, the only thing we have to do is flip this guy over. So, in order to get rid of my divide by 21, I would multiply this guy by 21, right? So if I multiply the bottom, I have to multiply the top. Same with any fraction. If I have a fraction like this and I multiply the bottom, I have to multiply the top. To give me an equivalent fraction. So therefore, I get 21 x squared over 400 plus y squared over 25. <coughs> you just can't leave your fraction. You need your fraction in the denominator when you need to take the square root of it. But the equation itself, you can't leave it in a denominator. How did you find b squared? b squared, well, we plugged in an x and a y into here, 4, and we plugged in a 2 into here, and we solved this equation for b squared. So you had this. So the easiest way, multiply everybody by the common denominator, b squared 25. So just multiply every term by b squared 25. So out comes your b squared. You're left with this times this. Out comes your 25. You're left with this. And this guy gives you, is going to give you this. 
25b squared. Subtract 4b squared, get 21b squared, and just divide by 21. But don't take the square root, because all you need is b squared. Okay. Um, did I give you 27? Good. 27. Um, now we start changing your center around. It's no longer at the 0, 0. God bless you. God bless you. Love you. It's no longer at the 0, 0. So take the average of the x's, the average of the y's, and you get your center. Your major vertices is your y, so the y gets the a. And the distance from the center to the vertex is 3. So 3 squared is 9. And they gave you your co-vertices, there's B. All that was different in this one is the center change. It's off the 0, 0. They give you 29. 29. This was good because this is a minor axis length. Remember the axis length is the whole thing. So half of it is from the center would be from the center to the end point, the co-vertices would be B. So take half of that, half of that would be 1, so B is 1. And this is my, my minor axis, so this is where my co-vertices go. So if it's along <coughs> the x-axis, that means my major axis is my y. Oops, it's along the, sorry, it's along the, it's along the x-axis, so my major axis. Uh, yeah, this is my minor axis. These are my vertices. Sorry, these are my vertices. There's your major axis. Let's find your center. Let's just take the average of the x's, the average of the y. That's just your midpoint. The distance from half and through, so half of, of the 0 plus 8 is 4. There's where your midpoint is. B is this, because my minor axis has a length of 2. So my minor axis is going to go here, length of 2. So therefore, half of it would be 1. Your ellipse is going to sit, let's say it sits over here. This is your major axis. This is your minor axis. Your A is the distance from the center here. So your length is the distance from here to here. So just always cut the length in half. Almost there. So I give you 31? No? 35 is your next one? Okay. 35 is my last one. I, I can't move it any further down. So you have a center. A good place to start. Now A is equal to 2C. Mm. That doesn't make much sense to me. But I do know where my center is, and I do know where my vertices are. So can I find A? So if I find A, and A is the distance from my center to my vertex, A is 4, can I just set this in place of here and find C? That's what that was designed to do. And from C, can I then find B? So then you got all your parts. And again, you don't really care about this part of it, you just care about the B squared. Instead of taking the square root and then squaring it again. All right, so hyperbolas. Hyperbolas, if you take a look at it, what do you notice that's different in the formulas? It's the subtraction. It's the minus sign. Good. And what else do you notice? Danny, what do you notice? What else besides the subtraction? Did I interchange A or B? What did I do instead? Switched up, and not the H and K. But the numerators change. This one, X comes first. This one, Y comes first. Because 
in, in a subtraction, I can't just swap them around without having something change, right? If I do 5 minus 3, if I do 5 plus 3, 3 plus 5 is, is fine. You do the property. But if I do 5 minus 3, isn't it different than 3 minus 5? Yeah. So therefore, the way we tell the major axis in, in the hyperbola is the one that comes first. Because that's the major one. It makes a difference which way we subtract. So first of all, you're going to identify this big standard form thing. They're going to have opposite signs. An x squared and a y squared will not have the same sign. They'll have opposite signs. And whoever comes first is the major axis. Now, we technically don't have a minor axis in this. That's why we have little, a plus little axis over here. We technically don't have a covertity over here because they're hyperbola. If my major axis is my y, it's going to go like this. So my hyperbola is going to look like this. If my major axis is x, my hyperbola is going to look like this. Say my center is 0, 0. My hyperbola will look like this. So we only really have a vertices. However, what we have to do is make this little box in here somehow. We have to make a box. And we have to send these asymptotes through here. Because we need to know how wide to make those little parabolas go. So in this little box, we actually need to find a covertity per se. But it doesn't touch the hyperbola. It's not confusing. And you'll, you'll see when we get there. Now, this formula is almost the same formula, but what's different? Adding it. So now, which letter should be my biggest letter? C. Because whatever A and B is, I'm adding it and getting C. So what it does now, think of this like as my ellipse. Say this was my ellipse, right? My, my subtraction put my C in here. My addition is going to put my C out here. Because doesn't the parabola have a little focus point outside? It goes like this. So the plus is going to put my C outside of that little box. You'll see them all work in a second. Um, your transversal axis, this is your major axis. This is, we just call it a transversal axis. That means where does this transverse off of? Where does this come off of? And this little sweet thing down here is your equation for your asymptote. Now, not as bad as it looks, because watch. Y minus K is from here. X minus H is from here. The square root of Y over the square root of X, this is your slope, the change in Y over the change in X. When I get to down to here, if this is my y denominator, I, I don't use the a's and b's because they can change. So just use this under y, take the square root of it, and you'll, you'll see this when we make the box. Take the square root of this, and it's just your slope, y over x. So it's really not that bad to look at. We just need the equation of these two lines because these are called asymptotes. My hyperbola will never touch that asymptote, just like the asymptotes in anything else that we use. Okay? <coughs> once, you, once you see this in action, it's not so bad. So let's try this. It just is a little different. Let's see if that this door. I can see this. Okay. So let's <coughs> All right, so again, we're going to start with, we're going to complete the square. And we need to go. We're going to complete the square, but we're going to identify this first. So the first thing I notice is I have an x squared and a y squared. So this cannot be a parabola, right? I look at it again and I say, it could be an ellipse or it could be a hyperbola. <coughs> Are they both the same sign? No, it can't be an ellipse. 
they're both different signs. One's a positive, one's a negative. I have a hyperbola. The hyperbola is going to have like the same format of your ellipse almost, except the minus sign. K still goes with the Y, the H still goes with the S. And this time what's interchangeable is this part, not the A and the B. <clears throat> so I don't know who's my major one yet, who's going to come first. So I poke all my S's together. That's something that maybe I don't have anything here. And I move this guy to the other side. have to complete the square. So what are we going to have to do with the first part? Take out four. I believe myself my space, but I'll take the four out right here. Okay, now, when you take the four out, remember, when you complete your square, you're going to put it back in. You're going to get the same situation as your ellipse. So remember for your ellipse, you had, um, Sometimes we had a number next to it, sometimes we didn't. Because when you divide, you're going to have to factor that out, reduce that out. So it's going gonna, gonna to look the same as an ellipse, like when we set it up. The only thing is it's going to have a minus sign in it. So the minus will work itself out. And sometimes what happens is, depending on what side these are on, if you have an x squared here and a y squared here, remember you're going to bring your y squared over, so it's going to change the sign. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So always one of them is going to have to have a, a positive, one is going to have to have a negative. So what's half a two? And one squared in? <coughs> Sorry, one. So multiply this out. There's my four. Now, this guy, I don't really have anything to complete my square with, right? So I'm just going to leave him alone. I need this minus sign. This tells me hyperbola. So I have nothing to worry about. If we had something, we would factor that out and we would complete that square the same as we did this one. So this is going to give me a negative 12. Now, I need to be equal to 1. Yes. yes. I need this to be equal to 1, not a negative 1. So what should I divide by? Negative 12. If I divide by a negative 12, I switch these signs around. But do I still have a situation where one is positive, one is negative? Right. So put the positive one first. I need to subtract to be in the middle. One is going to be positive, one is going to be negative. But my negative is going to become my positive, isn't it? Doesn't this go into this four times and now I have a positive? This can happen, right? And a negative divided by a positive, there is my subtract. So this goes into here three times. Now, it just so happens that this guy happens to be larger than the second one. This one can be smaller than the second one. Because the major axis is the one that comes first. Doesn't matter if A is larger or, or smaller than B. But this guy is my major axis. If this was a 1 down here, he would still be my major axis. It's the one that comes first. So A squared, B squared always stay like this. A squared, B squared don't change. If this is a 1, this is still A squared. Okay? So again, A. B, C. So what's A? 2. What's B? 3. I'm going to put right next to it, but it's approximately like 1.7. And C? I get C squared equals A squared plus B squared. So C squared gives me 4 plus 3. And so therefore, square root gives me 7. So that's somewhere between 2 and 3. So let's just, I don't know where, but let's approximate it like 2.5.
somewhere, right? Square root of 9 would be 3, so the square would be 2, so I'm just going to say 2.5. All right. What's my center? Negative 1, 0. Okay, so let's find my center. Negative 1, 0. This is my center. This is going to help you if you translate your axis a little bit. Now, which one is my major axis? The Y. So the Y is where my hyperbola is going to go off at. My hyperbola is going to look like this. Somewhere. Translated right now. But somewhere like that. Now, the key to this guy is just make sure that you make this Find your vertices, find your co-vertices, even though we don't use them, and we're going to make a box out of this. So we're going to still do the same thing, God bless you, as if we were doing an ellipse. You know how in an ellipse you did this and you just made the oval? Mm -hmm. We're going to do the same exact thing and make a box. So we're going to go up two and down two. Then you're going to go, well, let's, let's find those. So we know our center is at negative one zero. So that's my vertices. What are my vertices? Negative 1, 2, and negative 1, negative 2. Everybody okay with that? This was this? Because A is 2. It's, it's under the Y. Whatever is under your Y. Now remember, it doesn't have to be bigger than your B. It could be smaller. If it was a 1, I'd go up 1, down 1. That's still going to be my major axis. That's the part that usually troubles kids. Because the ellipse is meant to be bigger. This looks like a mountain to be bigger. And that's the Right. Yeah. Well, are you doing this in your room? Oh, sure. Okay. Yeah, it's like in. Megan, could you see Miss Gaffrey um, in the in her room? All right, so let's get this done. So now, my co-vertices technically going out <coughs> radical 3. So this is one way, so I'm a little bit over here. That's why I just wanted to approximate it, right? 1.7 just brings us to the other side and the other side here. We don't really need those points. What we need is this box. We just need that box. Through that box, we're going to send through two asymptotes. You're going to go through the corner. We'll find those equations in a second. My hyperbola uses this vertex, does not touch this box, uses the asymptote as a guideline. So if you want, write your V there so that you don't go off the other one. It touches it and uses this as a guideline. It actually says how wide should this thing be. If my box is narrow, because remember, it, can, it doesn't matter which one's larger, so sometimes your box looks wider, sometimes it looks narrower. It's, it's all a little bit strange. Okay, so now, I don't really need to write my co-vertices because they don't exist. There's my hyperbola. All I need is my asymptote. So start like this. <coughs> Take your y. I'm just going to put y minus 0 for now. Okay? And it's a line, so it fall, falls into a, a nice little format. Here's my slope. It's the chain, and it's a plus or minus, because you got two of these guys. Agree? Two of them. One goes one way, one goes the other way. Now, I take what's under my Y. I go to my Y. I take that guy, and I just take the square root of it. Because your slope is change of Y over change of X. It's technically, you see how your slope is from here? You could count this point, can't you? So didn't we go up this far and over this far? Isn't that my slope? So technically we went up 2 over radical 3. There's your slope. But easy way, take what's under your y, take the square root of it. Take what's under your x, take the square root of it. And then go to your, for your equation, your formula, and just pull this guy out. x plus 1. So here's your equations of your asymptotes. That's all I want you to do. 
get it into y equal. You can leave it like this. If this was y minus 2, all I would want you to do is to say, add the 2 here, and do y equals 2 plus or minus this ugly looking thing. But you don't have to resolve it. Just leave it just like that. So it's really not that scary. Take the y thing that's here. Take the x thing that's here. Change the slopes. It's actually this box. I went up 2. I went over radical 3. Slope. So even though the formula looks weird, it's not that bad. Just remember, A and B doesn't matter who's bigger. It matters who comes first. If the x came first, then this would be my vertex, and my hyperbola would go this way. Everything else would still look exactly the same. Okay? So, give these a try for homework. How many did I give you? Um, two. Six? That's not bad.